Hello, I am David Hilser. I am a critical thinker, a dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something your university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. I am here today to talk about a book. And actually, if you've been looking, there's a book right over here. Follow my, right there. I'm right on that, uh, right there. It's been in my videos. Go back, check my videos. It's been there for quite a while. And I'm going to talk to you about this book today. It's called Relativity is Dead. I love the title, of course, and if you're a critical thinker, these are the kinds of books that you want to, re to read. And, of course, you can find this book on Amazon because one of the great things about Amazon, I got a lot of my dissident books from there pretty cheaply, is that libraries, unfortunately, go out of business. But fortunately, there are people who collect books and sell them. Sometimes they'll even say, this book's really radical uh, idea, but hey, um, it's for sale. Take a look. And this book is no exception. This book was written by Otto Luther. And I have, again, you can buy it used on Amazon. I will give you the click uh, down below. This is an original book because in here, whoop, in here, I found and fell out when I bought it. This says, prior to his death in 1977, the author did not consider this text to be definitive of his work, nor did he, he authorize its distribution. I trust, I trust the reader to take this into account. Please note also the typographical error on page 28. This is amazing. Uh, this is a great book. I look at these like as gold to me. And on page 28, I'm going to go there. You will find, in fact, this is true. There it is. The man himself, or perhaps his son, William, put that in there and said there was a typo. And it's great. This guy, it was published in 1966. It was in the library somewhere. And um, I believe it says the GWC Library. Now, uh, maybe somebody will find that out what that is. A Golden West College Library. Golden West College happens to be a college in California. i actually been there before. And this was in their library. And this said discard. Oh. Their trash is our treasure. And let me read the back of you because this is pretty good. Relativity is dead is a radical critique on relativity theories and is a bold confrontation with those members of the community who regard relativity as valid. 1966, folks. In a report on a successful completion of eight years of research, starting 1958 probably or before that, um, the origins of flagrant inaccuracies contained in relativity theories. That was a search for the origins of flagrant inaccuracies contained in relativity theories. It rejects the misconceived notion that concepts with conflict, uh, which conflict with relativity, are worthless. Listen to what he says again. It rejects the misconceived notion that concepts which conflict with relativity are worthless. That doesn't. That's what he's saying. He's not. He's saying well. It's rejecting that idea that, hey, there are conflicts there, and they are worth something. And in here, he uh, has on the beginning of his book here, I'll just uh, show you, there's a quote, and of course it's from Einstein. It's one of Einstein's great quotes. And if Einstein were alive, he'd probably believe and, and go with this as well. And what is it? If a single one of the conclusions drawn from it, relativity theory, proves to be wrong, it must be given up. To modify it without destroying the whole structure seems to be impossible. What he's saying, pretty much, if this is wrong, throw it out. And that's what a lot of people around the world have done. A lot of scientists, a lot of professors, scientists, engineers, and just laymen who have really spent the time to read this have come to this same conclusion. Relativity is dead. In fact, our organization was started by John Chappelle because he was one of those people who was a critical thinker and saying, hey, this relativity theory is wrong. And in here, of course, you have really gems. And one of the great things he does is he talks about all the problems and paradoxes here. So let's go through here and find that uh, the paradoxes. Here we go. Uh, in uh, paradoxes and, re and relativity theories, he has one par paradoxes number one through number five, contradictions number one, through number five, misconceptions number one through number five. He liked the number five. And perversions of fact number one and two. 
which is pretty interesting. I love that. So I'm going to read one of those. Um, perversion of fact number one. One is expected to believe that empty space is endowed with the dynamical properties which cannot be attributed to the void. Maybe he's talking about space-time. Further, or just light going through through space. Further, empty space cannot account for the uh, the firmly established wave theory, since wave propagations require an undulated medium of substantial but immaterial density. So what he's saying is he seems to be a proponent of ether. Remember, ether is the material that light would wave through, just like sound goes is white light. Uh, sound waves are through air. Light would be light waves would be through ether. So we're talking about that. If I back up uh, a bit here and go to paradox number one, it's also related because there's uh, also special relativity, but he's uh, concentrating here on general relativity. And he says, one must believe that space-time, this is paradox number one, one must believe that space and time are inseparable. Space-time, talk about it all the time. However, according to the second law of thermodynamics, the universe is expanding into empty space without time. Again, what's really interesting here is that you can look at, he is concentrating, uh, again, more on general relativity, which is really interesting, again, because they're special and general. And um, it's really interesting to me always to get these books, and I, I think of them as gems, because here's a guy who spent eight years putting this book together, wasn't even satisfied with it, but he had it printed at that time, which is a lot harder than it is today. Heck, for Lulu, you can print your book out for 16 bucks on demand in black and white. And at this time, it must have been a lot harder to do. But here's a guy who I can read, even though he's gone, I can read what his take was, what his criticisms were. This is his message in a bottle to us, and you can get this book too. So it goes on, and he has very a lot of chapters in here. Um, the unconfirmed theory, paradoxes, and relativity theories, the ether, fundamental substance, strict analogy to the Michael, Michelson Morley experiment, again that's really important, the time and measurement of time, gravity, and electromagnetic phenomenon. So he is saying that gravity is an electromagnetic phenomenon. Always interesting to look at that. Um, that is one of the models people are trying to use. Um, constant and mean propagation rates, waves and particles. There's the wave particle duality coming up, charge to mass ratio of an electron. These are just like great stuff. I know my father's <laughs> he's dad, please don't take my books. You know uh, what happens? I, I'm gonna put it right back here because I'm pretty much done. But it's gonna be guarded now because now my dad not only can knows about the book, he knows where it is. And he, he comes to my bookshelves and and he takes them, my books away, like pushing gravity. It just sort of, uh, Dave, I don't know if you know, but uh, I took your book on pushing gravity. Um, anyways, uh, I thoroughly enjoy books. Who has probably more of them than anybody probably is Greg Volk. I wish I lived really close to him because I'm grabbing books. I wish we just had time to just read all this stuff. I mean, it's just amazing. And if you ever have a chance to try to get a hold of these books, you can go to Amazon and search for things like relativity. What you're going to find are books like this that no one's buying and therefore used and usually are cheap because people say, ah, this is a bunch of weird stuff. But hey, again, I have the link below. There are a few left, I saw. But you remember what I always say, don't take my word or anybody else's on faith. Stay critical, stay thinking, read, read, read. There's great stuff out there. I'm your science therapist. I'm trying to show you books to read. Whereas you, people have these self-help books, I have books on self-help to be a critical thinker. And this guy, Mr. Otto Luther, he is to be congratulated on his critical thinking. Really full of gems that I really enjoy. In fact, I'm going to go back tonight again and read some more of this because especially on the electron and that kind of thing. Interesting to our model, my father's and I model. So as I always say, ciao for now.